Well, as you can see, Tom Cover was my, research, my PhD advisor, and you can tell I didn't hate the experience. Um, here I am, no doubt, laughing at one of his brilliant jokes. When I showed up to Stanford, um, I didn't know anything about information theory, and I took a class from Stephen Boyd, who, after the first quarter, I asked him what classes he'd recommend I take, and he suggested a few math classes, and then said, have you taken information theory? Followed immediately by, take information theory from Tom Cover. That was the only thing he said about department courses. Um, when I was a student, I would travel to ISIT, and other students around the world would want to know, what is Tom Cover really like? And I'm hoping I can share a little bit of insight about what, what it was like getting to know him. Very enjoyable experience. Um, as you know, Tom Cover was, um, aside from everything we've talked about, brilliant. He was uh, very courteous, friendly, uh, caring. He, his door was always open. Visitors could come have great conversations with him. One of the highlights of the experience in grad school was Tom Cover had a weekly research meeting that was the highlight of each week. Um, everybody would have two minutes, round robin, to talk about something interesting. And um, uh, we'd have visitors, we'd have grad students from other research groups there. Usually two minutes would extend to five or more. But there was always the possibility that if what you were saying wasn't very interesting, Tom Cover would kindly let you know that it's been two minutes. <laughs> he was not one to fake being interested in something. He's too genuine for that. And we knew as his students uh, when he was interested or not, and it was actually a great challenge. It was, um, we would bring our research results, our, the topics we were interested to him, and that would be our test. Did we, did we distill it down to something interesting enough or does it need more work? Because you could tell whether, whether he found it interesting. Um, he loved jokes and uh, surprises, and uh, you, you can tell by referring to his uh, Shannon, uh, Shannon lecture. This was from his Shannon lecture. He said, theory is the first term in the Taylor series of practice. And I think this summarizes very well the way he viewed not only his work, but, but life. He looked for the most important aspects of whatever the topic of conversation was. And uh, it was a great uh, influence to have that. Um, so it, this came through in his jokes as well. Uh, he once told me that um, there are only four dimensions of taste. And so he thinks that chef's kitchen should have four bottles on the wall, and recipes should say, a few drops of bitter and a teaspoon of salty. Um, and uh, brief story, he, um, now I was more silly than him and he didn't always get my jokes. One, one uh, Halloween I showed up to his house with my children and I was in a full body chicken costume. And uh, he was puzzled at the door for a while, wondering who this six foot four chicken was mumbling about mutual information. <laughs> <laughs> then comes Karen to the door and she says, Paul, is that you? <laughs> I'm his only student at the time. And fortunately, Karen uh, understood my quirkiness. Um, he, he told me that he would have loved to have the cover of his textbook be a stereogram. Now, I didn't make this one very, very good. But if you blur your eyes a little bit, um, you should see information. And uh, he liked that idea. I, I guess the publishers didn't go for it or something. Um, so. Uh, you know, a, a few last stories. If you walked into his office, uh, you'd likely be drawn into some interesting conversation about gambling or sports or the direction of time, how to identify uh, from a stochastic process if you're viewing it forward in time or backwards in time. Um, he taught a course at Stanford on uh, math and sports, and this was the students were mostly disjoint from his information theory students, although I went to the class one year and enjoyed hearing him talk about whether kicking a field goal from the two-yard line was a smart thing to do. And the answer is usually no, if it's early in the game. And, uh, and why do the statistics say that the, the, the coaches are making the wrong decision? Or how to value a baseball player. He had some really fun models he latched onto for how, how to run a Markov chain with a single player playing every position. Uh, on the base and at bat and see how much they score. And he enjoyed that model. Um, lastly, uh, and here's a, a drawing of Tom that was in the students' offices the whole time I was there. This was made uh, from his friends at Stanford. Um, 
he, you know, when I was an undergrad, I had read books about Richard Feynman, and um, my wife knew that I had this fascination that he seemed like the most interesting person, and, and I would have loved to have gone back 20 years in time and uh, been his student. And my wife always reminds me that I got, I got my dream. I got more than I could have ever dreamed for. Um, uh, Tom Cover is really the most interesting and, and uh, inspirational uh, leader and mentor. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he was wrong about one thing, the AEP of, um, of lives. Uh, not every life is equally interesting and exciting. And uh, not every life is equally fortunate. Although maybe it's just that we're the atypical people, and we had the uh, opportunity of being influenced by Tom Cover. And I thank him for his, uh, his friendship and his leadership and uh, his intellect.